Ah, okay. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Warren Lecture Series. I am very pleased uh, to introduce our speaker today, Professor Kostya Kornev. Uh, Kostya is a professor at the Department of Material Science, Sciences and Engineering at Clemson University. Uh, he has uh, got his uh, master's and PhD degree from Kazan State University in Russia. And m you might not be aware of this university, but you absolutely know two of its most famous alumni. One is Leo Tolstoy, and another Vladimir Lenin, whose last <laughs> <laughs> and the last one was expelled for the revolutionary activity. <laughs> but uh, there are more of them. Yes, Lobachevsky was uh, Lobachevsky, who is the creator of uh, non-Euclidean geometry, was a president of this university, and this university was funded in 1804 by uh, Alexander I. So it's really, really very famous university. So after, after getting his PhD, Kostya worked for a couple of years at the Institute for Mathematics and Mechanics at the same university. Then he moved to Moscow uh, to work uh, for the Institute for Problems and Mechanics of Russian Academy of Science at the leading institute in mechanics, and in 2000 he moved to the United States. He worked at Princeton University for Textile Research Institute, and from 2006 he's at the Clemson University. So I will not uh, take his time anymore. Let's uh, join me in, in welcoming Kostya. Thank, Thank you very much for the warm introduction. So and the. I'm going to talk about butterflies. Probably uh, it's, uh, it's time for you because the weather outside is pretty cold, so it comes uh, as warm up. Okay, and the motivation of that is uh, beyond the fun. So, motivation of that is uh, uh, their uh, unique ability uh, to suck up the liquid of different kind of uh, uh, viscosity, concentration of uh, sugar or whatever. And the, our interest, because I'm sitting in the material science department, our interest mostly uh, is the uh, their fiber structure. So uh, there's an idea to move uh, microfluidic devices from stationary chips uh, platforms like uh, uh, you cannot move around so to the fibers. Okay. And good thing this is a butterfly proboscis. When butterfly is not uh, hungry, so the proboscis. Uh, is uh, coiled when the butterfly is hungry and uh, uh, approaches the drop of food, so uh, that proboscis is straightened up. Okay, good thing is that that uh, first of all quite interesting uh, st uh, structure from the point of view of uh, uh, structure mechanics, but from the point of view of fluid me mechanics is also interesting because uh, that uh, fiber is able to. Uh, deliver fluid to, to uh, pick up uh, fluid, and also uh, the fiber is e equipped with a lot of sensors. So that that uh, uh, interesting uh, feature is attractive for material scientists as well. So you can see these uh, proboscis uh, in different animals, uh, in insects, so and uh, all of them they uh, take advantage of the fiber structure. So. As you see here, the, the natural fibers are quite complex in the morphology, in, in organization. Uh, we are able right now to, to spin fibers of different shapes, so the, the shape can be quite complex. It is also the hollow fiber, so uh, and the, you can deliver fluid, and 
uh, you can imagine uh, to uh, actually uh, bring the fluid down to the uh, target uh, of uh, and that uh, fiber is very thin it, it, right now uh, the diameter of the fiber can vary between uh, 10 microns and up to 200 if you wish so 100 is not a problem but the fiber uh, in uh, in the production line can be very long so kilometer long fiber is your microfluidic channel okay can you may you can chop the fiber in pieces and that's your your chip already gone so uh, now uh, you can make uh, the fiber functional, conductive, or whatever, but uh, still flexible. Now, what can we learn from the uh, uh, nature world? So can you uh, actually uh, do the same thing as butterfly does? So definitely uh, it's probably impossible, but at, at, at the same time, uh, side, if you understand the physics uh, of uh, uh, the proboscis organization, the, the mechanism of the fluid pump, and you can uh, uh, make uh, the material like proboscis and uh, pick up the fluid, for example, hazardous droplets, so, and use an electric field, uh, uh, flex the fiber, uh, bring the tip of the fiber to, to the drop, and suck it up, and then bring that liquid for the, uh, to the analytical device. So you don't need to touch it physically, so everything can be done in fiber. Probably this is the, uh, the, uh, the slide, only slide I can show you during my presentation, which is related to artificial proboscis. So if you have any question, we, we can continue long, uh, longer discussion. But now I'll move to the uh, natural proboscis and introduce one. First of all, I'll formulate the problem. So and why uh, I became interested in that. So uh, these are the butterflies. So as I said, this is uh, the butterfly proboscis. Now, if you look at the uh, food source, you will be amazed. That butterfly can drink from different food sources. Mostly it, it, it can uh, drink honey. It can uh, drink, uh, they take out fluid from the forest material, right? As a civil engineer, you understand, in order to pick up water from soil, you have to uh, build up the extra pressure, right? This guy is able to do that, and the, the rate of absorption of that liquid doesn't significantly change if uh, the butterfly drinks from the forest material or from the drop. How come the same device can supply fluid, can, can keep uh, pumping at the same rate, and the, uh, uh, transport fluid at the same rate without anything uh, involved? Right, and as you see here, the butterfly proboscis is highly flexible. Uh, the size of it, it's like your hair, right, but it, it can be coiled on demand. So you have something here quite unusual. At the same time, you, you have many paradoxes around. Now, uh, uh, if you look at the cross section, this is the uh, SEM picture of the proboscis. Now, if you cut a piece of it and uh, look at the cross section, it appears that uh, the fiber, the, the, uh, the uh, proboscis itself, it is made of two strands. And this is how it looks when the butterfly comes out from the pupa. Okay? Uh, these are two strands, and butterflies is able to assemble them into the proboscis. So now you have the foot canal here, uh, the hole, and these two uh, fiber, uh, two strands are called galia. Okay? They're full of muscles, and uh, uh, also the hemolym, it's uh, blood uh, in insects, okay? Now, for me, it's interesting that structure, okay? And uh, uh, the uh, first, uh, when you look at the biology literature, what it says that butterfly has the pump here in the head, and that pump, when it's supplied, the butterfly is able to suck up the fluid. So that, that is a picture traditionally taught by the textbook uh, of uh, uh, entomologists, right? So this is wha what you see here, okay? Now, at the same time, as material scientists, you will uh, look at the structure and see how come these two strands coming together, right? Not leaving any pores in between, okay? So biologists are saying, okay, the, the, the uh, the proboscis should be sealed, otherwise liquid will go out, okay? Now, the, the, this is not uh, necessarily uh, true, but uh, 
uh, the problem uh, with that was that first of all you have to answer how uh, this uh, proboscis is, uh, um, uh, makes the, the unit, right? And then uh, uh, you need to, to show that actually uh, that proboscis is sealed completely, okay? Now, the second paradox is that when you start looking at the, uh, in experimenting uh, with butterfly feeding, uh, engaging butterfly in uh, absorption of droplets and measuring the rate how these droplets shrink when butterfly uh, take it up, and uh, relate the flow rate, the, the rate how quickly that drop disappears with the applied pressure drop. You don't know, you cannot measure the pressure drop, but you know the length of the proboscis, right? You can estimate the radius of the food canal, right? And you see the, the, uh, there is a strong uh, dependence on the radius. Now, if you calculate that flow rate and uh, mu is viscosity of the fluid, okay? Now, the, the proboscis work like a syringe, so you suck up uh, the liquid, just apply on the piston, right? Uh, withdrawing the piston. Now, you will see that actually interesting thing is that the calculated pressure drop appears to be greater than one atmosphere, okay, for some cases. How come on the earth uh, the animal can pro produce the pressure that, uh, greater than, uh, vacuum pump can produce pre uh, a pressure greater than one atmosphere? Okay, something is going on here, str uh, very strange. So that, that is the first estimate anybody can do, right? But uh, uh, that estimate was somehow uh, was uh, not, uh, I mean, I, would, I don't know why the, how this guy didn't pay attention to it, but anyway, the, the, uh, all this uh, uh, textbook, they, they use puzzle formula, uh, ignoring the fact that actually uh, the pressure is that high, okay? Now, uh, the, the first thing, okay, uh, you, you are talking with biologists, they would say, okay, these guys are producing saliva, okay? Saliva would uh, dissolve anything, so you, you would have uh, even nectar uh, would be much thinner if you add saliva. Now, this is not obvious, but anyway, so we went to, uh, and, uh, to, to the lab, so the, 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 the problem is that uh, you cannot measure viscosity of saliva. Butterfly is not happy giving it to you, right? <laughs> so well, well, what you can do, you, you can just uh, uh, engage butterfly, just ro robbing the proboscis, you can uh, engage butterfly in uh, releasing, say, nanoliter droplets, so it's a 100 micron drop, okay, and somehow put you in your device. So if you can do this, great. So we were not able to do this, so we came up uh, with, with another technique. So what you can do, you can put the magnetic nanorod, okay, in the, uh, uh, in the drop, okay, and force this nanorod to rotate, okay? So you apply rotating magnetic field, okay? Now, you know that the, the uh, and uh, do it very slowly. Okay, so you don't uh, need to look at the inertia and just look at the uh, viscous resistance. The gamma is a drug coefficient. Okay, you balance the, uh, uh, the mechanical torque with magnetic torque. M is the magnetic uh, uh, magnetization vector, so which lies along the axis, and B is a magnetic field, and uh, you want the magnetic rod to follow the field. Okay, but uh, this is a very simple equation when you just uh, uh, look at the projection on the, uh, uh, on the axis. So you will see that actually uh, very interesting observation uh, first made by Jacob Frankel. So wh uh, what we look here, uh, we look at the uh, rotation frequency of the nanorod as a function of the driving frequency of the external magnetic field. Okay, so it appears that uh, you have, uh, you, you can uh, make a, a linear relationship when the frequency is not that high, and all of a sudden, the nanorod start to, sw uh, to swing back and forth, so uh, that is a critical point when nanorod would exactly follow the field. 
Now, how does it look? So uh, this is an anorot uh, uh, image in the dark field, okay? As you see, the, you apply the field, and anorot happily rotates uh, following that field. Now, if you increase uh, the frequency of the rotating field, you, you will see that actually nanorot cannot uh, keep up with the field and start to swing back and forth. So and th this point actually is very interesting because uh, you can analytically find a relation between this critical frequency and the drug coefficient. That way you can extract viscosity. Okay? Doing that, uh, you will find quite interesting information that uh, viscosities of the butterfly saliva for different animals is very much similar to the viscosity of nectar actually those butterfly diet on. Okay? So typically you, you, the, the, the food of the butterfly is really of matches the viscosity of, uh, of saliva. Okay? So there is no such a medical fact that butterfly is going to dissolve the food. Okay? Now coming back to our problem, saliva appears to be not helping. Okay? The pump is designed that way to match of the difference between the uh, food and saliva, uh, okay? Now something is going on uh, which is really mm, uh, surprising. So we went to Argon National Lab, okay? And this is actually the, the ex experimental setup. So what you do, you hold butterfly by the, uh, the, the wings, okay? You cannot sit in that room. So everything has to be uh, controlled from, uh, from the outside. And uh, uh, hit the proboscis uh, with the X-ray beam from the side, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, simultaneously, you have to open up proboscis uh, uh, with this wire. So you are going to see movie right uh, uh, in a second. So uh, don't pay attention to this black uh, hook. It's a wire, okay? Uh, look at the interior of the the gray area is a bubble. Uh, the darker area is the uh, liquid, okay? Good. First of all, before doing that, uh, we checked the first textbook hypothesis, okay? If you do the tomography, you will see that actually uh, the butterfly proboscis is not a drinking straw. At the end of the proboscis, the hole is sealed, okay? Or we cannot uh, uh, decrease the resolution here, but uh, you see this little slit, actually two galleys are coming together, uh, sealing the hole, okay? Meaning this is not a drinking straw, okay? How come butterfly is happily uh, drinking water, everything, right, without the, the, the open end, okay? Now, uh, the, the next, uh, uh, and the, the food canal is developing when you uh, step about one millimeter from the tip of the proboscis, okay? Uh, now, what you are going to see now is experiment when we, uh, 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 the drop was placed on the, mm, on the uh, linking device, so as I said, the two strands are coming together and forming a kind of zipper, okay? Uh, the, they are hooked uh, by the, the uh, special devices, okay? And we are placing drop right on that zipper to check whether it's sealed or not, okay? And this is a real picture of butterfly with uh, spread wings now. Uh, this is a big drop and the watch what happened, the, the, uh, the a gray air, uh, a channel here is the open foot ca uh, canal. Okay? Now observe what happened. Okay, watch what happens here. This is a drop sitting outside the proboscis. Do you see the liquid bridges? Okay, the head is here. You, you see, the, this is my head. And butterfly is alive. Okay? This is real-time image. 
butterfly is alive, so, and it drinks what? The bubble trains. Okay? That drop sinks down, forming a f uh, liquid bridge, and that liquid bridge uh, is delivered to, to the head uh, by the butterfly pumping, I mean, the sucking up. Okay? Now, uh, a little bit of uh, Capillarity, I understand majority of you are familiar, but uh, just uh, students who didn't take that class yet. So what, what, what we need to know that if you have uh, the liquid body, in that case the bubble, okay, the pressure inside the bubble is greater than pressure outside, and the difference is well defined by the surface tension of that bubble. So it's, uh, the pressure difference is directly proportional to the surface tension and inversely proportional to the radius of that bulb. If you have uh, this uh, uh, liquid uh, cylinder, so one radius of curvature goes to infinity, and the, the pressure difference is proportional to surface tension, not twice, but surface tension only. Again, the smaller the radius, the greater the, uh, the pressure you, you, you can build up, okay? Now, what is happening here so Plato, the famous uh, physicist, uh, uh, he discovered that actually cylindrical body is not stable. So that is why uh, all, all the time uh, you see the droplet, spherical droplet, the, the uh, cylindrical uh, body wants to be partitioned from the droplets, okay? And if uh, uh, the liquid here penetrates uh, of the, uh, as I said, zipper, it is shown a little bit uh, here, I, I just uh, opened up uh, the, fra uh, the crack, so to show that two galleys, they are separated by the uh, uh, zipper uh, type device. So if the liquid sinks down here, forming a meniscus, so what is happening, because the, the interior of the foot canal uh, is wettable by that liquid, so uh, you are going first to form the liquid film, and the, uh, the foot canal is cylindrical, as I said, that liquid film is unstable, okay? It, uh, it, it wants to uh, collapse, uh, uh, f uh, first forming the collar, and then uh, forming a liquid bridge, okay? So that configuration is not stable, and the, the, these are the stages how we form, uh, I mean, how we think we, uh, how the liquid gets inside. So uh, this is the uh, bottom of the drop, and the drop, goes through the slit-like pore here and uh, spreads over the foot canal, then forming a film, and then f uh, that film uh, um, encases uh, the whole thing. Now, uh, this is the evidence uh, initially, uh, the uh, little bump, uh, if you watch the same spot here, initially you form that little bump, bump uh, uh, increases uh, the size and then collapses, okay, to form the liquid bridge. So that's understandable. Now, natural question, okay, if this is the case, uh, that, uh, w w what is the role of the uh, pump? Okay, we, we saw that uh, uh, the liquid bridges were taken by, uh, by, by, the, uh, by the air, right? Now, that was a tricky experiment. Wachit uh, Lee, uh, the friend of us, uh, working at Brookhaven lab. He, he designed uh, that experiment uh, for, for this purpose. What, what he did, uh, he put a beam splitter here. Now the beam hit the head of the, uh, uh, of the butterfly and at the same time hit the drop, okay? That way you can uh, see whether the drop or whether the, uh, the pump is working or not, okay? The tricky thing is that, so the, the, I had very good students, uh, dedicated students. They, they found the spot between, as I said, the, the proboscis is this full of sensors, okay? But if you can find the, sense, uh, the, the spot free of sensors, you can place the drop and butterfly wouldn't know about its, its existence, okay? So once you find that, that spot and place it here, what you'll see that actually the, the pump is not engaging, so the, this, uh, the pump should be here, that butterfly just breezes, right, but the pump should be here, 
watch what happened. Beneath a uh, liquid bridge stays here forever. This is the best picture, I'm sorry, <laughs> we, we can make. So uh, it's a little bit uh, 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 dimmed here, but uh, you, you'll see, uh, you should see the bridge. Okay, so meaning that when the bridge appears and the bump is not engaged, so it would stay there, right? So the liquid goes inside by the capillary reaction. As I said, the pressure in the bridge is below atmospheric, right? That is why liquid goes inside and feed the, uh, the bridge all the time, right? But well, when the pump is not working, bridge stay there, okay? That's the message. Now, I do that. What, what, what uh, the, the next question? Okay, if uh, uh, the proboscis is still permeable to water, okay, what are the pore radius? And w w what makes it permeable, right? So the hypothesis was, okay, if I have the zipper-like structure, right, uh, these teeth, they, they form the, the holes, right? And these holes are actually uh, continuous, so the drop can go through. Now, how to estimate uh, the size of the pores? So uh, you are familiar with famous Darcy's, right? So what, what we need to do, uh, we need to follow the change of the drop size, right? Uh, remember that uh, the pressure here is inversely proportional to the radius of the drop, right? Calc uh, knowing the radius of the drop and knowing the size of the foot canal, you know the pressure difference, right? So according to Darcy's law, uh, the uh, permeability times the pressure drop divided by the thickness of the, uh, of the wall, so we'll give you the needed flow rate. So we can calculate the flow rate, we can calculate the pressure differential knowing all these parameters, so and roughly estimate the pore size using simple uh, model of the porous materials. So what we found that actually uh, that uh, volume as a function of time is linear, okay? So, and if you calculate uh, the pore size, so uh, cl uh, cl uh, closer to the tip, the pore size increases uh, further from the tip, the, uh, the, the pore size decreases. So, but uh, typically uh, it is measured in hundreds of nanometers. So, the proboscis is nanofluidic device, okay? So, it Get, uh, it uh, uh, allows uh, a liquid to penetrate through them, but the holes are very small, okay? Now, uh, the, the message here, okay, the, the first scenario is that uh, the uh, butterfly actually uh, doesn't like uh, to have uh, the continuing liquid column. It appears that the friction can be significantly re uh, reduced if uh, uh, you're uh, split the liquid column onto the bubble trains, okay? That way you, you can effectively decrease the contact area. Uh, that way you can effectively decrease the friction between uh, the uh, food and the walls of the tubes, okay? So now this is uh, basically the conclusion uh, from what I said. So uh, again, from uh, that uh, ex uh, system of experiments, we learned that actually the proboscis is not a drinking straw and the mechanism of uh, liquid penetration is quite complex. So uh, you have to, uh, uh, to deal with the surface energy of the food canal, which uh, is uh, uh, higher than the surface uh, energy of the exterior. So the liquid wants to wet the food canal. That way it, uh, it is uh, uh, drawn inside. Now, uh, a little bit about the, uh, the wetting properties, which is quite interesting. If you play the drop on the uh, proboscis somewhere closer to the head, you'll see that uh, the drop beats up, okay? But uh, uh, the butterfly is uh, uh, able to, to drink uh, the liquid uh, from the tip, and the meniscus is uh, pointing up, uh, meaning that one part, this is water, so one part is hydrophobic, another part is hydrophilic. So very interesting scenario of the uh, change of the surface energy of proboscis in one place. And also interesting thing, if you're, you know, dip the proboscis into the liquid, you'll see that 
meniscus has quite uh, interesting configuration with the cusp, okay? So again, uh, the, that singularity is quite unusual for the uh, fluid physics because uh, fluid doesn't want to have any singularity. Now you have to, uh, to deal with the support here. And w what is important is to distinguish between the flat and the curved surface. Uh, so if you play the drop uh, on the flat surface, so uh, if the material is hydrophilic, uh, it, the drop spreads. If uh, uh, material is hydrophilic, you are going to, to see meniscus pointing up. If it's hydrophobic, you'll observe the dimple. So meniscus is pointing down. Now, if you do that experiment, uh, and uh, look at the behavior of meniscus as a function of the radius of ideally cylindrical tube. What you will see that actually the height of the meniscus appears to be proportional to the radius of the tube, okay? So the smaller the radius, the smaller the height of meniscus, that is why if you uh, are fishing, so uh, you can fool the fish, right? So, uh, making your fishing line thinner and thinner, okay? And uh, uh, the gamma is a contact angle, so uh, that also you can play uh, with the contact angle. Now, what happens and what, what we did, now, if you dip the proboscis into the liquid and watch the change of the shape of the meniscus, what you'll see that actually uh, when the proboscis is just dip it uh, at the end, uh, the meniscus is pretty uh, well developed. Now, if you dip it further and further, you will see that eventually uh, well, the uh, liquid surface uh, stays unperturbed, okay? That is very interesting. Again, th this is a signature of the transition from hydrophilic to hydrophobic uh, of, uh, scenario of wearing. Now, if you look further and uh, uh, ask yourself, Uh, can you predict what will happen, but uh, taking into account the proboscis is actually not as cylindrical uh, in cross-section, but uh, uh, more or less uh, elliptical, uh, would you have the same type of meniscus or not? So mathematical model here is uh, uh, quite complex. You have to solve the nonlinear Laplace equation of capillarity. So th this is the... Uh, the uh, the uh, curvature term and H is the uh, height of the meniscus above the horizontal surface far away from the fiber. Okay, epsilon is so-called the bond number. Bond number tells you how important the gravity is with respect to the capillary uh, uh, forces. So the small bond number meaning uh, that the capillarity prevails over the gr uh, gravitational forces. So at the surface of uh, the fiber of the proboscis, uh, you have to uh, state that uh, the contact angle is well defined by the uh, liquid solid pair, okay? And far away from the proboscis, the, the surface should be horizontal. So you refer from, so that problem seems to be quite straightforward to solve numerically. Uh, but again, uh, looking back and trying to explain the cusp, so you have to uh, watch carefully what you are doing with your uh, numeric algorithm because you have to reproduce that singularity. So what we did, uh, the, we look at the uh, menis uh, meniscus problem from the uh, point of view of uh, match asymptotic expansion. And the idea is that, uh, because the, capil uh, the capillarity is so strong, uh, you expect that the shape of a meniscus closer to the fiber uh, will be not affected by the gravity, mostly, right? But far away from that, uh, the mostly uh, gravity and, uh, uh, wants to, you know, to bring the meniscus down to the, uh, to the uh, free surface. Okay, so you have two zones, effectively. Uh, one is closer to the fiber, another is further from the fiber, but you don't know where to put the boundary, okay? Now, far away from the, the idea here, uh, if you, say, uh, drop a ball on the surface of water, 
It doesn't matter what the shape of the ball has, right? Uh, the waves propagating away from the ball, some, at, at some point we'll find the circular trajectory, right? So that shape of particular drop doesn't play any role far away from it, right? When you toss that, that drop it on the surface of the <coughs> liquid. So that is an idea. Far away from the fiber, we expect to have universal dependence of the meniscus profile on, on the properties of the liquid. So, and you, you can do this using the separation of variable method to, to find that actually that constant here dictates the behavior of meniscus above uh, the, the free surface. That way, uh, where the universality comes from, but the constant would be affected by the properties of the liquid. You don't know in advance uh, how to find that constant, okay? Now, uh, one step back. So interestingly, that uh, in principle, Laplace law of capillarity allows you to have surfaces with no pressure differential, okay? Pressure inside that bubble, which is not closed from both ends, okay? And outside that bubble is the same, atmospheric pressure, okay? That surface is called the uh, minimal surface, right? It, but it's a kind of unstable if you don't have any support, okay? Now, looking at the uh, expansion with respect to the bond number, my parameter saying that the capillary force is much stronger than gravity, I will see that actually closer to the fiber, you will have that operator, sorry, you will have that operator tell, telling that the, the shape of the meniscus shouldn't depend on the pressure drop because uh, uh, there is no you know, support of the gravity here, right? And capillary pressure is dominated. That is a minimal surface, right? So you have to find the minimal surface which uh, would uh, exactly fit the boundary condition at the, at the fiber and uh, would be supported by the meniscus at infinity uh, so the, the surface here should behave logarithmically far away from the fiber. So the universality comes through this uh, parameter. Uh, the behavior at infinity depends on the contact angle of, uh, that uh, liquid and fiber makes. Uh, and uh, the, the rest should be calculated accurately. Now, I would... Uh, we'll put this uh, in terms of fluid mechanics parameters. Now you can recognize that actually my problem of the minimal surface appears to be the same in formulation as a problem of filtration of non-Newtonian fluid. There's a very interesting dependence of permeability on the flux, okay? Interestingly, if you resolve with respect to hydraulic head, gradient H, and J is the flux, you will see that that nonlinearity comes from, in my case, capillary forces, but in principle, it's a, uh, that problem can be put in the framework of, non, uh, of filtration of flow of uh, non-Newtonian uh, fluids through the porous material, okay? Good thing is that this problem can be solved analytically using the methods of uh, complex variables. And uh, here, uh, my fiber is well defined. It has uh, known cross section, so I have to uh, you know, formulate the boundary condition at the known surface. And the far away from the fiber, I have this logarithmic behavior meaning that uh, this flow like flow from the, uh, from the sink or the, the source, right? And uh, I need to, to find, uh, to reformulate uh, the pro uh, free boundary problem uh, in terms of the problem uh, for the uh, semi-infinite flow, okay? That can be done uh, using uh, some complex analysis method. Good thing is that you, you can, uh, compare the analysis for the case when the 
uh, meniscus approaches that demarcation uh, when uh, the hydrophilic, hydrophobic uh, surface uh, properties change, okay? In that case, uh, the height of the meniscus uh, is not uh, that big, and you, you can even uh, have analytical solution not applying uh, the complex variable method. But uh, interesting uh, message is that for elliptical fiber, you are going to have uh, the height always greater than uh, the fiber of the same circumference, but cylindrical, circle uh, cylinder. So that, that is interesting message. Other thing is that for elliptical fiber, uh, uh, you are going to have completely different shape of the meniscus. What I mean under uh, difference, if you look at the fiber placed by, uh, in, uh, in front of you by the uh, narrow part, you will see that meniscus is sagging down, okay? If you look at the uh, meniscus when the fiber is placed in front of you by the wider part, you will see that uh, uh, the contact line is bulging up. Why is that? So, and the, uh, in summary, you are going to have now uh, the meniscus higher uh, for the elliptical fiber as compared to that for the circular one. So the, the answer uh, can be you know, found uh, in the simplest way. Assume that you have you know, uniform film coating this elliptical fiber, okay? What happens with that film? When uh, the film covers the narrow part, the capillary pressure is greater than uh, the capillary pressure uh, built up at the wider part. Definitely liquid is going to be squeezed out from that narrow side, right, toward the, uh, uh, the wider one. So you are not going to have the same height of the meniscus if the, if the fiber is shaped. So, and butterfly uh, is uh, pretty smart because uh, this zipper is sitting right on the white part. So a uh, butterfly pushes the liquid, spontaneously pushes the liquid from the side, from the narrow side toward the wider one, okay? So that, uh, the, the fiber is built that way. Now, if you play around with, uh, uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the shapes, you can uh, come up uh, with very interesting conclusion that actually for the elliptical fiber of uh, regular ellipticity, I would say, the meniscus looks like that, and the contact line here, I, I just pull out the fiber to show just the meniscus. Uh, this is a numeric analysis. Now, if you have interesting configurations so mathematical trick, I understand it's difficult to make it uh, a real fiber, but if you have uh, corner-free uh, uh, profile of the fiber, but uh, with infinity large curvature, second derivative goes to infinity, you are going to have uh, the contact line with a cusp. So typically what we expected that uh, this uh, singularity will appear only at the corners. Now this is not. If you do this accurately, that is why the beauty of complex analysis, you, you can prove that uh, this is uh, the case. So uh, doing that, uh, no one numerical method can, can, can give you it. Right, right now you are welcome to, to change the numerical uh, method uh, to capture this singularity when you know it. It should be there, okay? Another uh, kind of thing, uh, some insects, they have pretty um, uh, razor blade type uh, of feeding devices or cutting devices. Now, if you look uh, at the shape of meniscus, again, using the, uh, the complex analysis, you, you, you can predict actually new type of singularity, that mini, uh, contact line is going to have a jump right at the edge, okay? Quite unusual thing because now you have to have continuous surface here when the liquid first meets uh, the edge, uh, it has to jump up. And uh, as I said, the, the physics is uh, quite understandable. Uh, liquid film doesn't want to sit on the edge, right? So. Here, uh, the liquid got squeezed toward the wider part, so you'll, you'll have that jump, okay? 
Now, these are the conclusion. As I said, the, the, the shape of the proboscis is, is critical, but also the chemistry. And again, uh, beauty of the uh, butterfly proboscis is a uh, feeding uh, device or as a microfluidic device is that it has uh, uh, double uh, porosity and also it has uh, dichotomy inverting properties, right? It's uh, uh, you know, hydrophobic and hydrophilic sim uh, simultaneously. The, the, wider, uh, the, the majority of that fiber is hydrophobic. That is why butterfly uh, during its adult uh, life keep the proboscis clean. Right, because it's like a Teflon uh, uh, coating, right? Nothing uh, would stick uh, to the surface, okay? And one more thing, one important, uh, how much time I have? Five minutes? Okay. Uh, uh, Im important thing is related to the sensing ability. Now, these guys, uh, example of uh, Ant, for example, uh, they have a big challenge. So touching the liquid surface, they don't want to be engulfed in, 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 in that surface, right? Now, uh, how uh, nature, uh, what kind of sensor nature invented in order to prevent that animal uh, to get in? So you, you need to figure out the way how it works. Uh, in the butterfly, that sensing device is sitting here uh, at the end of the leg. So again, the butterfly first try uh, the foot uh, was stepping uh, or tapering uh, the surface, right, and see if uh, it's uh, sweet or not, right, uh, or, uh, and then only after that uh, it opens up the proboscis. Now, reformulating this problem in terms of fluid mechanics, what you want to, to, to know, you want to know how quickly the liquid gets into the pore, the, the sensor device is actually pore, the pore, how quickly get, uh, it gets to the pore and send the signal to the uh, nervous system in order to <laughs> detach the leg, right? What are the f uh, physical forces involved here, okay? What, uh, th that problem has a great long history. So if you have uh, liquid and uh, uh, the, you put the capillary in contact with that liquid, uh, meniscus forms and rushes inside, right? So, and th this problem was uh, uh, first, uh, the, the uh, dynamic problem was first formulated uh, by Lukas, uh, uh, German physicist, and Washburg uh, about the same time. So uh, they were looked at, uh, uh, actually, uh, Washburg probably worked for, for the agriculture uh, the agency. So they were looked at how quickly water you know, got uh, uh, into the soil. Okay. So, and the law is Lucas Wardman law. It said that uh, the, the you know, rate of meniscus propagation is inversely proportional to square root of time, okay? So when the viscosity is dominating here, and for the fast flow, when ignore viscosity, it appears that velocity should be uh, uh, constant, but it's inversely proportional to the square root of the size of the pore, okay? Now, in insects, if you have the pore, uh, everything is measured in hundreds of microns, so your pores, you are talking about uh, uh, hundreds of nanometers. I, I, I showed you uh, the first estimate. So uh, that velocity should be extremely high, right? So and the, uh, at that time, so you, your pore uh, should be invaded by a liquid immediately, so the, the animal wouldn't have time even to, to uh, make any action, right? will be engulfed immediately, okay? Now, again, we went uh, you know, to Aragon National Lab and to see first how meniscus uh, appears in the first place, okay? Th this is a very simple experimental device. You have the tube, and now you approach the liquid uh, surface with the tube, right, and film everything from the side, okay? What happens here, quite interesting, uh, uh, this is the X-ray phase contrast imaging showing that uh, the, the very first moment you don't have well-defined meniscus, something is going on, some waves or whatever, corrugation of the surface. And then all of a sudden you see that the one uh, part of the, uh, of the uh, wall is covered with a liquid 
And then when the meniscus, actually the nucleus, has a radius of about the radius of the tube, you are going to have well-defined continuous meniscus. Okay? And that meniscus propagates along the, f uh, the tube with almost constant velocity for, for, for quite a bit of time. Okay? So once the message is that once meniscus forms, it is not uh, steady, I mean, it is steady moving, right? But it, it, it's not still, okay? So all the boundary conditions uh, uh, that uh, uh, classics were using, is, uh, they are not applicable in that case. So you, you do have velocity not zero right at the moment when you can think about uh, continuum mechanics, right? Uh, and that continuum mechanics starts at the point when the radius of the, uh, I mean, the size of the meniscus is about the, the radius of the tube. Okay, now uh, probably all of you are familiar uh, with uh, this equation just briefly. What I am doing here, I am trying to, you know, to look at the rate of meniscus uh, propagation through the tube, okay, uh, as a function of physical parameters. Okay, what, what we have here, we have inertia, right? Every time uh, the liquid occupies, uh, occupies new uh, empty space, and we have uh, viscous friction uh, as uh, uh, dictated by Pozel formula. And I introduce new term here, uh, the friction associated with the contact line. Okay, I assume it's uh, linearly dependent on the viscosity okay, and proportional to velocity, okay? Newton's law of friction, but uh, apply to the contact line. And the driving force here is the capillary uh, action or, uh, the, uh, or the intention of the uh, liquid to wet the surfaces, okay? Now what happens here, the, the experiment that can be done, as I said, we, we checked with X-ray imaging, but easy to, uh, to do experiments uh, with just, uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, optical microscopy, so that uh, position can be measured. Uh, uh, the radius of meniscus can be measured from the, uh, from the pictures. And everything, if now, interesting thing is to check uh, whether this uh, uh, law, the, the friction law, would depend on the size of the tube, okay? So we change uh, the size of the tubes, okay? and see that all the curves, the uh, kinetic curve, they fall locally at the beginning of the process of meniscus uh, uh, evolution, they fall on the same straight line. Now, if you com compare all the theories, this is Lucas Warborn the theory, this is a uh, theory just linear, uh, and this is uh, when we have uh, viscous friction, uh, and contact line friction, and inertia, so that that curve can be uh, uh, well reproduced, but the only one parameter in that theory uh, comes uh, uh, to the scene. Uh, this is new friction coefficient, okay? Interestingly, that uh, if you uh, think about uh, uh, the flow, uh, outside flow, the, the capillary, so uh, definitely you are going to have the same a linear contribution, but the coefficient uh, here, the, the coefficient of proportionality which we measured here is about 100 times greater uh, than you would expect from the, uh, from the term associated with external flow, okay? So this is definitely not uh, effect of the external flow. Now, if you look at the uh, analysis, uh, you can analyze this uh, 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 differential equation and see depending on the parameters uh, uh, that in principle you can have four different regimes of, uh, uh, of flow uh, into the tube. So uh, we observe only uh, transition between the first regime and the second regime, so the first regime is controlled by the contact line friction and the capillary force. The second regime uh, is controlled not only by the contact line friction, but also Poiseuillian friction. So uh, these two regimes were observed uh, uh, in our uh, 
uh, hundreds of, of, uh, or tens of microns tubes. So we expect that the, uh, the same first regime uh, should be observed in, this, uh, in the uh, uh, sensing uh, devices of the animals because that way you can control actually uh, uh, changing that friction coefficient or changing uh, the uh, surface properties of the uh, sensor. You, you can uh, slow down the process of uh, liquid, uh, 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 you can match the, the process of uh, uh, signal propagation to the head uh, and the, uh, that uh, uh, flow. Now, uh, as you see here, uh, during evolution, proboscis uh, initially, uh, it's believed that it was brushy. Uh, during evolution, it becomes uh, more smooth, but uh, this brush is supposed to uh, tell you uh, about this uh, uh, sensing uh, ability of the uh, butterflies. And here is my uh, conclusions for the talk. And the, I think uh, I'm, uh, I took a little bit more time than I expected. So uh, the, the take home message is that that butterfly proboscis is extremely interesting uh, fluidic device. It's not the drinking straw. Right, it is equipped with a system of pores, and you you do have double porosity in place uh, because uh, uh, smaller pores they, they provide the capillary action to withdraw fluid from different porous materials. So that is why butterflies are able to drink from soils and take out minerals. Right, where, where the pore sizes are very small. Right, at the same time you need to decrease the friction. So uh, you, you have to have sufficiently large uh, uh, transport uh, 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 canal. Uh, now, uh, we also show that multifunctionality of the proboscis uh, is expressed through the wetting properties. So you, you have dichotomy in wetting properties, uh, philic and phobic. And we show that some, uh, I, I wouldn't say that that is the uh, the, the medical fact, but at least it is related to the, uh, uh, to the design of the sensing uh, devices of the butterfly that actually we discovered that the uh, contact line friction has to be uh, included in all uh, models uh, of the you know, meniscus propagation from uh, through the uh, tubes. And here uh, 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 the team so we started with these guys uh, in 2011, a little bit earlier with uh, butterfly uh, when uh, first uh, uh, cohort of people, high school students, come to, to my lab and uh, we started filming uh, the process of uh, uh, butterfly uh, feeding and then it, it now it becomes business but funny business. So this is new team, and Peter Adler, he's an entomologist, uh, uh, professor of uh, biology from our uh, university, a very good friend of mine, and all the papers we are uh, writing together. So, and this is a new team. Oh. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. First, we have time for maybe three questions, and then we continue at the reception. So, please. <coughs> Yes. You're in the mechanical oh, okay. Sorry. I'm in material science department. In material science. Yes. Right? So what is the conclusion for material science? For material science, uh, I didn't have time <laughs> 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 to conclude. So, uh, we are trying to, to make uh, devices based on the principle of action of butterfly proboscis in order to prop the fluid, a very small amount of fluids, and uh, to deliver fluids through, through the uh, fiber-based devices. Okay. So we, we want to move away from the stationary microfluidic platform to equip the fibers, say, uh, in your jacket, you, you would have everything uh, which would monitor your health, which would monitor the environment, the whole thing, so you don't need to do anything <laughs> on your own. <laughs> your body wouldn't do anything. Thank you. <laughs> So I have an important question. I, 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 I want to make a statement and see if it's correct. Butterflies can then drink in outer space in zero gravity, correct? Yes. I was worried about that. 
because when I go to outer space, I want there to be butterflies. There, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I you can bring butterflies with you. Yes, they. Drink. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can bring butterflies with you. <laughs> okay, maybe last question. Yeah. So you've got an indication that, that hydrophobicity changes on the exterior of the proboscis. Correct. But on the, do you have any indication of on the interior? Does it does it change? And is that advantageous uh, in one way or another? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know about this. A very good question, but uh, uh, I mean, using the X-ray phase uh, contrast imaging, we, we can just uh, you know, follow the contour of the uh, meniscus. We don't see significant change, but that that's just few 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 experiments. We didn't do any systematic analysis yet. I, I don't know. But you would, am I right, that you would expect a change if if it did? I the, the meniscus would change in shape. I can give you, not I, but uh, Darwin can give you very challenging question. How come that this uh, moth, Darwin's moth, uh, I have uh, the somewhere, yes, has very long proboscis, extremely long, longer than its body, right? And uh, uh, that proboscis can dip uh, into the flower cavity v v very far from the surface. But uh, the moss is covered. I don't know how this moss is drinking. <laughs> and nobody can answer me. When I showed that uh, uh, the, the pressure differential should be enormous, yeah. okay, so you, you, you cannot rely on the causal law here, right? Something is going on with that moss. So Darwin was not stupid. <laughs> 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 okay, I think we exhausted all time, but we have reception, so everyone is welcome and we can continue. <laughs>